Eric Mwad with Mwad.com with the World Market Analysis for this weekend of July 18th and July 19th, 2015. So let's take a look at how Asian markets closed on Friday. We can see a little bit of a mixed picture. Actually, I would say mostly up. Uh, Japan was up slightly. Jap uh, China was up 3.5. Hong Kong was up about 1%. And we see that the Australian market was pretty much unchanged. Cospi was down about 0.53. European markets are closed for the week. And as of Friday's session, they ended the day slightly down. Let's just call it about 0.3% down for the most part. Right now, I'm recording this with the U.S. market with about three hours or two and a half hours to go before the close of the U.S. market. And the Dow is down. NASDAQ is up. So Dow down, NASDAQ up, S&P 500 unchanged. So let's go and take a look at the charts. We begin by taking a look at the Canadian market. We continue showing this potential for weekly chart support based on this line on the weekly. Having said that, we see that we are still looking at a crossover here, which is a bearish crossover between the 13-week moving average, undercutting the 34-week moving average. The last time we had a major signal from these moving averages was during this crossover, which was bullish, and the market went on a nice run. So that's one view that the potential for a weekly support as long as the market is holding on this line, there is a chance that it could recover. We also s talked about possibility of the weekly chart showing support on this green line here, which has been support over the last couple of years. Every time the market has come here and shown support with uniform activity at the line, we tend to get some type of a weekly bounce. And over the last two weeks or so, the market seems to have st stopped going down right there. So that weekly chart does give those who are looking for the market to go higher some reason to continue holding and expecting the market to go higher. Take a look at the daily for the Canadian market and we've run into some type of short-term problem here. Number one, we haven't been able to recapture a downward sloping 200-day moving average and we also haven't gone back above a downward sloping 50-day moving average that sets the stage for a market that is generally pointing down in terms of the charts. Also, if you take a look at where the RSI recently broke down, you see that we've come back to a level on the daily RSI. So there was a break point. Let's, ju let's just say this line here around the, the 50 level on the daily RSI. After this break point, which happens to be off this level here, the market's been coming back to this 50 level and showing uniform resistance or failure to move above the 50 level and each, each time the market has pulled back and we see that over the last two three days the market has done the same thing showing resistance so right now i think net net we are looking at the canadian markets and actually many of the world markets we're going to be taking a look at do indicate that day to day the markets are showing some type of a short-term pullback Let's take a look at the Brazilian market by way of um, the ETF, the EWZ. Now, the Brazilian mar market is down about 1% on Friday. I didn't show you that, but it's about down 1%. And we see here the possibility of this market going low. You can see that we could very easily move the 10-week moving average to fresh 52-week lows. So I'm talking about the moving average. If the moving average moves to fresh 52-week lows, that suggests that the 10 week moving average is predicting that this market is going to have to record fresh price 52 week lows. So that's the threat. If you take a look at the monthly, you can see that this could also easily break below the recent month monthly closing low. A break of the monthly closing low there might lead to a further drop in this instrument. We take a look at the daily and on the daily we can see that it is showing resistance, has not been able to move above a, a downward sloping 50 day moving average, downward sloping 200 day moving average. So net net, the re resolve here is that the market looks to be pointing down. And even recently we've come back here just like the Canadian market, we've been unable to recapture the 50 level on the daily RSI. We had resistance around the 50, which gave us this short term high. And again, resistance around the 50, 
which gave us this day-to-day -day short term high here so even the Brazilian market is showing signs of stalling around here let's take a look at some European markets we begin by taking a look at the French market the French 40 the French CAC and go back to a couple of weeks ago about a week ago or two ago we had drawn a line on the daily RSI and we were suspecting that if the market can show support on this line with uniform activity which is where it has been bouncing then this market had a chance of also moving higher so this was when the market was trading here around the 200 day moving average and what we saw at the time was nice uniform support at the green line and the market since then has gone on a nice sharp upward trajectory so now we are looking at what could be an opposite of that support I think we've come back to resistance and this can be easily seen coming off the highs here so when the market made that high so let me draw that and show you that area because it shows so resistance off the highs there corresponds with this RSI brick that brick can be drawn like that and so you can draw a line from this brick which is something around there you see we've come back to the same level here if that red line becomes daily resistance on the daily RSI if it points down from here with uniform activity the indication is that now we are looking at the potential for the next swing trade being down on a day-to-day -day basis this type of analysis can also be seen if you take a look at the German market which is showing that it has come back to its break level break level on the daily RSI RSI broke down here which broke the market during this run so that was the high and so we can draw a line from there because that is what killed the recent move higher and the market is coming back to test that sentiment if this co is confirmed as daily RSI resistance one can expect that the next swing trade on a day-to-day -day basis is going to be pointing down the one thing I do like on the German market is the fact that it seems to be holding support at the 50 on the weekly RSI support there and also recently we see that it has done the same thing so in each example here we are seeing that it is and has been forming double bottom support on around the 50 level on the weekly RSI and also recently the weekly chart is showing double bottom support so the weekly looks okay maybe suggesting that over time the market could move higher even though the daily is showing signs of potential resistance now if we take a look at the monthly for the German market we see that you know it's not out of the realm of possibilities that this could eventually lead to a fresh monthly breakout as you can see it needs to take out the recent monthly closing high of 11966.17 which is the current monthly closing high also we see that on the monthly RSI we seem to be finding support on this line connecting RSI lows going back to early 2009 and end of 2011 and also the lows for this um, past one year late 2014 and also over the last two months so that line is holding and as long as that line is holding one has to assume that this market looks to poise to move higher month to month as long as this line is intact now we have to be careful here because if the market breaks that line which is a long-term multi-year support line if it breaks that line one can assume that the market is going to go on a big drop the last time we, we saw a major break of a trend line was during this RSI break here this was the break in late 2007 and of course we know what happened in 2008 during this market crash period so we have to be careful because support shows the ability of moving higher otherwise if we break support on that RSI on the monthly the indication is that more than likely the market goes into a major bear market right now we are looking at support so we have to assume that the market could easily move higher it's important to note that RSI if it can move above 69.1 if the RSI on the monthly can move above 69.1 that would indicate strength right now we are trading at 68.91 so it, it will not take a lot of energy to bring the market back above 69.1 which is where it tends to have a nice push to the upside 
a quick look at the London Financial Times Index, the FTSE, and we see that it has also come to a level of potential resistance on the daily RSI, connecting RSI tops. You can see that it nicely connects to the recent RSI tops here, 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 and also now so it seems to be showing resistance on that line. So that's one layer of resistance. And the other one is coming back to test the break of the previous highs. So the market made a high here. And we can see this corresponds with this RSI break. And that break is what is being tested right now. So this line there, so there was a break there. And we can draw a line from there. That's another layer of resistance. The market seems to be responding to that, which might be explaining why it is showing a down day on Friday. And keep in mind, it also seems to be showing daily resistance on the 50-day moving average. So again, another wild market showing potential to move lower after the recent day-to-day -day bounce this past week. If we take a look at the ETX, ETF that tracks the Russian market, we see that it is also coming back to test the 50 level on the daily RSI. Just like we've seen in other markets, this has been showing resistance recently, connecting it to recent short-term highs. And also here, if this is confirmed resistance on a day-to-day -day basis, one can assume that this also indicates movement lower in the coming days. Keep in mind that we have a downward sloping 50-day moving average and also a downward sloping 200-day moving average. So those moving averages are pointing lower, indicating that generally speaking, prices are going to be tending to trend lower until that is changed. Let's take a look at some Asian markets. We begin by taking a look at the market, Hong Kong market, and we can see that just like the Brazilian market week to week, seems like there's some type of support connecting price lows going back to this channel, going back to, to 2012. The weekly is showing some type of support on this line. Also, we see that RSI is showing support where it has been bouncing over the last couple of years. As you can see, uniform activity above the green line and back above it was nice entry there. Double bottom support here on the line, which was this lows. And now we seem to be holding. As long as the market is bouncing on that green line, indication is that week to week, it could bounce. What's really confusing is that if you take a look at the daily, and this is true in most markets, you'll, you'll realize, the daily is still struggling to hold above the 200-day moving average. So it remains to be seen whether this is going to hold or not. Uh, kind of tricky uh, spot for the market. But you can also see that the daily did come true with uniform activity. You can see uniform activity on the green line, nice support. Uniform activity below the green line and back above it for the nice support there. And recently, a V-type formation, uniform activity below the green line, back above it. You know, indicating that maybe it has found some flow around and above the 200 and moving average. That remains to be seen, even though it's not the most, um, st the strongest bounce ever because it has yet to recapture this above this break line. So recently it broke down here, that blue line break. So let me draw that again. That break is res responsible for this movement here to down here. And so we haven't necessarily moved with authority above that line. So until we do, maybe this is just a back test of this line. In other words, we broke below the blue line. We haven't recaptured it. If this becomes resistance and points down, the indication is that there's more downside. So daily charts to me, generally speaking, tend to be indicating a pullback. And on most world markets, weekly charts are indicating the potential to move higher. Let's take a look at the Chinese market. And we can see that what it's trying to do here, to keep it simple, is try to hold this line which connects the recent weekly RSI lows. So this weekly chart shows that this is where it could potentially find support or break. If that holds, and this is keeping it simple, if that holds, then the market bounces. But if that breaks, expect another leg down. It also happens to be a level around the 50 level on the, R on the weekly RSI. If that level holds, that's good. If it trades below 50, on the weekly RSI, expect it to go down. Now take a look at the daily. And on the daily, we see that we haven't recaptured. Number one, we needed to be above this green line, but we are not. 
And you can see ever since we broke below that green line somewhere there, which is this period, we had a major drop and some tremendous volatility. So we haven't gone back above that green line. In fact, recently, day to day, we seem to have come here and hit that level. So on a daily chart, the, the Chinese market is not proving itself on the charts. So there's resistance on one level on that green line. And also this break point has not been recaptured. So once this line connecting lows was broken, which is here, you can see that since then the market has gone down and in fact recently came here and showed resistance. So as long as those two lines are showing resistance, indication is that this market, generally speaking, despite and in spite of all the volatility, in my opinion, looks to currently be pointing down. Let's take a look at the South Korean market, the KOSPI, which had a nice bounce off the RSI lows we discussed the last couple of weeks. As you can see again, another instant of uniform activity support line giving you nice indication where to find potential for a move high in the market. And also recently we held on the green line, which is this lows. So now that we've seen that bounce, I think keeping it consistent with other markets, I suspect we've come back to a level of potential resistance. As you can see, ever since this break here, which was off this high market spin down, we've shown another resistance on that red line, which is this short term high. And I think the market around here could struggle. So the dailies, again, another world market showing that the daily charts could be showing potential for a pullback. If we take a look at Japan, just want to show you that on the weekly chart, weekly chart for Japan, again, another world market showing that the weekly charts indicate potential for a week to week bounce. As you can see here, and this is keeping it simple, the market's been generally holding above that line. So this blue line now that I'm drawing right there with a uniform activity bounce there. Whoops. Uniform activity recapturing of that line. And recently we held here, which is the short term lows on the weekly. And again, we've gone below that line and back above it with uniform activity. So let me draw that again. So basically the weekly is showing that it, it is bouncing exactly where it needs to bounce based on support based on support here on the weekly which is this entry support on the line here which is this entry and again here it is coming and seemingly weaving itself back above that line if that's the case one can expect the possibility that it now has a chance of breaking out past recent weekly closing highs of 20,000 706.15 so if it can break out to fresh weekly closing um weekly weekly closing highs expect pressure to be pushing the market higher now remember we've been saying that weekly charts look okay worldwide if you take a look at the daily you see that the daily has yet to really convince me because ever off the highs here that high corresponds with this rsi break somewhere there and we really haven't shown any strength of breaking out in my opinion because there's some type of resistance around there we haven't really taken and moved above this potential line of resistance in fact we did show resistance on that level which is actually the high there so if we come here and show resistance i'm not sure so i would say if i was to take a bet here maybe sideways maybe around the 50-day moving average um keep in mind that this recent move came with support exactly on the line where we were showing support and so again, support came exactly on the green line, which is off the lows here. I'm not sure which way it wants to go, but the weekly continues to be strong. If you take a look at the Australian market, just like other markets, you see that the daily is coming back to a level of resistance on this line there. So this resistance line we discussed last week, every time the market has come back and hit that line with uniform activity, we made a short term high double bottom resistance for this resistance there again resistance on that red line which is this high and now we we close the week at the line which indicates that somewhere around here if the market shows resistance that we get a pullback otherwise for this market to truly really push higher it needs to be trading above that green line in other words it needs to be trading above the green line if it is to record higher prices if you take a look at the Indian market by way of the Nifty, we can see that generally speaking, 
we seem to be holding very well above the 50 level on the weekly RSI. This is where the market has been coming back and showing support. Even here, we had a slight support and a two-week move higher. And so right now that we are above the 50 level, the chances are that the market could go and trade higher. So weekly charts are looking good. And we've seen that across the board on most markets. On the daily, I suspect somewhere around here could be a level of resistance just based on the fact that it's coming back to test the previous break level. And it's somewhere around there. Oh, let me do that correctly. Somewhere around there. You can see that this resistance here gave us the high. And since then, we've come to that level once before. We had a, a resistance at that point. And we've come here re recently. We touched that, had a couple of days pull back, and now we are back here. If the market cannot move above that green line, I would expect a pullback also as far as the NIFT is concerned. Let's take a look at one African market and it's by way of the South African market. Again, showing support around the 50 RSI level. You can see here nice support with uniform activity. As you can see, support below 50 and back above it with uniform activity, nice entry support and at the 50 with uniform activity which is nice entry and recently we've seen two instances of uniform support around the 50 so we can assume that the weekly are looking good as long as the market continues to hold above the 50 level and take a look at the daily for the south african market and just like other markets it's coming back to a level where one can expect resistance day to day and maybe that day-to-day -day resistance could lead to the weekly charts changing. But you can see that ever since this break here, and that break right there was responsible for bringing the market off the highs, we can draw a line with there to exp where we expect resistance. We can see that it hasn't moved above that line. In fact, it had resistance exactly on this line with uniform activity and a major pullback day-to-day. -day. So if this is confirmed resistance, the indication is that day to day it will join other markets in probably pulling lower. Let's take a look at one more. In conclusion, it's the US market by way of the S&P 500. And the S&P 500, just like other world markets, is back to a level on the daily RSI where it could easily confirm resistance. We see that if this is confirmed resistance on the daily RSI, just like it did here, which was off the highs, indication is that this market is going to pull back day to day. So most world markets on a day to day basis look good. Yet, if you take a look at the S&P 500 and weekly chart, weekly chart looks great. I have to say that the weekly chart looks great because it's been bouncing at the 50 and moving higher over the last couple of years. Here we had uniform activity below 50 and back above it for nice re-entry. Bounced, bounced at the 50 there for a nice re-entry and now bouncing very nicely at the 50 and that indicates that the market could see new highs in fact very close to new highs so the dailies look bearish weeklies generally look good market is going to decide which of those two forces is going to overpower the other so wait and see it's a little bit confusing but i think day to day we are due for a pullback eric mother mother.com good luck peace and blessings i am out for now Woo! yeah